Hi, this is Avar from Scrappy Mania, and today I got a mini haul. I got this from Tuesday morning, so I went there this morning, and I found this Crafter Companion decoupage topper, and also I found some stamps and coordinating dies. So I went ahead and got the stamp to die, the stamp to die, and then I just found the one paper pad. I did not find a paper pad for the floor spread. So I might go to another Tuesday morning and see if I can find a paper pad for this one. So let's go ahead and see this. Now I, I did see this in on um, HSN one time. And you got the kit. And I forgot how much it was. I don't remember the cost. But I remember that it was a little pricey. I thought it was a little pricey because now that you have to pay shipping and taxes. Before um, when in HSN when you just pay shipping I would go online and buy the item and um, just pay the shipping and I was I was happy with that now with the new whatever passed or or, or whatever new regulation they have um, you have to pay taxes on whatever you buy so I, I stopped buying because by the time you pay the the shipping and the taxes and then they no, no longer offer a low shipping price. Like I used to be able to buy a lot of stuff for $5 shipping. Then I didn't mind so much paying the taxes if that was the case. But um, now everything, you pay shipping for every individual item and it adds up. The shipping is usually $3 to $5.50. So if you buy three items, you know, and it's $5.50, it's, you're already spending $15, $16 additional to the price of the item and then you add taxes to that so that's why I stopped buying so much on HSN I only get one item if I truly truly want it but other than that I just stopped buying I don't buy an HSN anymore the only advantage you have in HSN now is that if you um, use the, the um, flexible payments then you pay no taxes I mean not taxes you pay no interest and you can buy a big ticket item with um, over time with no interest rate. So um, if I want a big ticket item, I do do that, but otherwise I don't. So I'm gonna go ahead and test this out. So let's test this out. I'm gonna go ahead and test it out with this and cut it and see how it looks and put a one together. And then I'm gonna go ahead and test it out by stamping using the stamp and then using this and see how that works. So let me go ahead, go ahead and get my um, plate so that way I can run it through my Sizzix. Okay, so I got my Sizzix plates. And I'm gonna go ahead and position these. Let's see how easy it is to position these dies on here. Pretty easy it looks like. And it has number two. I like that. Well actually they make it very easy so if you notice here there's numbers four six so this is a one right here. If you move it, just align that one right there. Pretty easy. Two is the same way. This one is number four. There's a four. So you line that up right there. So number four. Then you have number five. So you line number five up. number six up we may do that later because um, I think the magnet there's not really a magnet there so um, I'll wait for it later because I don't want it to move I can always tape it down but we can wait for later and let's see if this one this one holds down pretty good
Okay, so I'm just going to reposition, make sure I got it just right. Reposition this one just right. Put this on top and let me run it through my Sysic machine, which I have it on, on the side of my table. So let's see how well it cut. Okay, so let's lift this one up. That one's cut pretty nicely. Very nice. And let's go ahead and finish this cut. I'm going to go ahead and run it through. Okay, pretty easy to cut out. Put this aside. And I'm going to go ahead and assemble. So what you want to do is you want to put some foam adhesive on the back of this. So I make sure that I put enough foam adhesive on the back of each of the flowers. And you want to have a good, good amount because I've noticed that if I only put foam adhesive like in the corners and not in the center, that your flower might concave, especially if you're going to mail these in an envelope. So you want to make sure it has the support. So make sure you put enough foam adhesive to kind of keep the support of the whole die cut. So um, I put in the first flower. Then I'm going to go ahead and put some more foam adhesive on the second, which is a smaller one. And that one, I'm just going to put two to make sure that I can keep the levels even. And I don't have any bending of the rows if I do decide to um, send this in an envelope. And it's pretty easy to put these together. You don't even have to figure out which one is, is the first one, second one. I mean, it's just pretty easy. So now I'm doing the smaller rows. And sometimes it's good to have some tweezers. So that way you can position it just right how you want it. And then this, there, it even comes with a smaller rows for the center one. Just to make the center rows of um, pop out of the bigger rows and look at the dimension there looks pretty nice so we just have one level for the leaves which is nice also because usually the leaves are not they're actually lower than the the, the flower itself so it works well that the, that you only have one level for the leaf and you have three leaves that it it cuts I guess if you want it to have higher leaves, you can always cut it twice. But um, this works pretty well. And then one sheet is actually a whole flower. So each sheet on your paper pad corresponds to one flower. I'm trying to figure out where this one goes, so I'm just going to put it here. So there's the flower. So it's pretty thick. I don't know about a card. I guess you can put it in a card. It's hand deliver, or you may have to pay extra postage. But there's the flower, three dimensional. Looks pretty nice. Okay. So now the next um, thing I want to do is I want to try out the actual stamp. So let's go ahead and stamp a piece of paper and then we're going to cut it out. So I went ahead and speed up the video. So I'm going to stamp out my image with some Archival ink. And I'm just using a scrap piece of paper. This is a great stamp to use for scrap. 
And you do want a positioner because in case you have to re-stamp it, you want to make sure you stamp it in the right position and you don't get a halo stamp or double stamping. And then I'm stamping up multiple of the leaves. And then I decided to use these Jane Davenport pastels to give it a, a little bit of blush. Because I didn't want to um, put a lot of color. Plus, this is not watercolor paper. So I, I don't want to use any paints or watercolors because it warped the paper. But using um, pastels really work well. And it also gives that flower a nice... Um, soft color that what I'm looking for. We can use this as our template. So if I go ahead and match this up like so so I can save this along with the die And see it's matched up right so then you go ahead and take your die and drop it in your template and then you can remove your template hopefully maybe not but. you may need to cut this out with the uh, let's see if I can remove it without breaking my template I may need to create a template that is just the size of this. But see, I removed it carefully. I slide it out. Then I'm going to go ahead and run it through my Sizzix. And let's look at how it came out. Not bad. It's pretty nice. And then, of course, you can use the other dies. These other dies. You can stamp this multiple times. And then you can use this other die to make the dimension just how they did it in this project. So in this project, they just, you know, had it in pieces. But... You just stamp this, let's see, one, two, three, three times. So if you stamp this three times, uh, four, so this is four, so one, two, three, four times, then you can use the other dies to cut out individual pieces and do your layers as well. So that will work. And then for my, the only problem with this one is that... We don't have an individual die. It looks like it's the center die that's going to cut out this, these type of leaves. So you're going to have to cut it a couple times. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this. So I went ahead and cut it three more times. This would probably be easier just to cut it by hand than using the die, I think. But um, I went ahead and cut these three more times to and put it on my. I'm going to use that to layer on my flower. Actually, I like this one. I do like this. Just a little too dimensional, but that means I just probably have to use less dimension. I don't. Really, I'm not used to using so much dimension, so I'll need a foam adhesive that's a little less thick. And I think just using regular fo um, foam, fun foam, might be better. So. I can cut this out out of fun foam and put it behind the cardstock and it should be good. But see how pretty those two look. So I do like this and I recommend it. Another interesting thing is that this paper has a rose smell. It smells like roses so um, it doesn't say anything in here that it, ha it has a fragrance to it. But it smells, it has a, a, a rose scent, which I like it. It's pretty nice. Yeah, the, it, I'm smelling it right now, and it's a, it does smell a little bit like rose. That's pretty nice. So I hope you like this video, and thank you for watching. Bye now.